Hey guys, welcome to a new guide video. Today I'll show you how to play Kha'Zix. Skill sequence is Q, max followed by W, so you prioritize the damage and sustain first and then E last for the mobility. The evolution order on Kha'Zix mainly comes down to preference, but I like to evolve Q at level 6, W at level 11 and E at level 16 so you get damage, mobility and utility for skirmishes and teamfights. We will be starting out with the Q level 1 here guys because that is our main tool for clearing out the jungle camps really fast. So what's really important to know about Kha'Zix is the fact that he gets a lot of bonus damage towards isolated targets and you can see when a target is isolated by looking at the circle around the monsters. Or the champions as well, that basically means that the target is isolated so your Q will be dealing a lot of bonus damage. So when you clear out the jungle camps you want to be weaving in auto attacks and then use your Q as well. You want to smite the Grum at the end here when it is low enough HP. There we go and then we can go to the next one. So your W will heal you guys but you have to make sure that you are in melee range otherwise you will not get the healing. So at the wolves camps we are going to hit all of the targets with the W. And then we also make sure to auto attack the small wolves once and then they will die to the uh smite item burn and then we get the isolation bonus on the big wolves then we can take it down pretty easily so now we have e level 3 here We're going to jump into the raptor cam and hit all of them with the AoE damage. And then we make sure to auto attack each of the small ones uh, just one time and then the next W will take them all out. And then we have the isolation bonus on the big raptors so our Q is going to deal more damage. The rip off is pretty easy to take as well because it is permanently isolated so we just want to kite it. We win auto attacks, use your Q as well. And then we can leap to the um, crux right after. I'm gonna leap and we're gonna focus the big one guys, that's the one you want to smite so... Take that down and then while the medium crocs are in the air then the uh, other croc will be temporarily isolated so you can get a quick Q off for some extra damage just so you can clear a bit faster and then W all the small ones there we go and there's a full clear you can go for a gank top side here that should be pretty free so use the flash so we can go in here she so doesn't really have any mobility spell up so there's no point in saving our E so that's pretty free Now I like to do a full clear on car 6 because it gets such a big power spike at level 6 guys when you have your Q evolution. That's why you can really start fighting people one versus one so you want that as soon as possible so full clear is really good on him right now or we can go for this trade here if uh, we're going one versus two. Should be pretty free he's gonna flash so I can follow up with my flash. Auto attack and a Q. You can also go for Katarina here. Oh, that's Trillian. Well played by Blitz. Really baited out that flash. Nice. The thing is, when you gank someone, you want to try to save your E. You want to wait until they use their movement abilities, um, abilities or summoners and then use your E so you make sure that you have a gap closer available for when they used it. Unfortunately, Kha'Zix doesn't really have any hard CC so it can take quite a while to take down the Scuttle in the early game. 
So if somebody comes to contest, then you're pretty screwed, but otherwise it should be fine. I'm gonna keep farming here and really hope to get that level 6 as soon as possible. We can go ahead and recall after this one. So we get the components towards the first mythic item, which is the dust plate. Dust plate is the best item on Kha'Zix right now, it gives you a lot of burst damage, but more importantly, you get that invisibility passive. It has really good synergy with the ultimate as well, so you can constantly stay invisible in fights, so it's very hard for people to target you. We're gonna do... Uh, we're gonna keep clearing the camps here so we can get that level 6 as fast as possible. You can also do objectives early on with car 6. As soon as you get level 6 then it's very easy to take take down objectives like the dragon because um, it will always be isolated so your Q will just shred it to pieces. So we're gonna take another camp and then we get level 6 here. So the way I path is that I go towards the top side and then I move down so once I get level 6 then I will be ready for the drake. Nice, we got our level 6 here, so we're gonna evolve a Q, so it's going to give us extended range. And when we damage isolated targets, then the cooldown of a Q, some of it will be refunded, so it will be on a very low cooldown, that means that in a 1 versus 1, or when you are taking down objectives like Dragon, then you'll be able to use that Q really really often. Nice, so right here I only use my ultimate for the bonus movement speed, but you can also use it to... Grant you that temporary invisibility for when ganking, so you get that extra bit of time before they start retreating. I'm gonna do the drag here, I think they will collapse onto me, but we have 6 with us, so I think it should be fine. But as you can see, we can take the drakes pretty easily with the evolve Q. We can turn on MF right after here. She is isolated, um, because of the circle you can see, so you're going to deal the maximum amount of damage with the Q. We don't want to chase any further here, so I'm just gonna back off and then we can do the blue buff here. You also want to make sure that you keep farming the jungle camps as well, because otherwise you will fall behind, even though you have a lot of kills. XP is still really, really important on junglers, because it is a role that can easily fall behind several levels, uh, levels compared to the other laners. Got the blue smite upgrade here as well guys, so you can go for the blue or red smite, it really depends who you're playing against, so... Against squishy teams you really want to go for the blue smite a lot of the time, because um... You pretty much one shot them anyway, so... The main problem is catching up to them, and that's why the blue smite comes in, because you get that extra bit of movement speed and you also slow them. You can go for Karina here. You can see our Q is dealing an insane amount of damage. But if you're playing against bruisers and champions where you'll be fighting 1 vs 1 for an extended duration, then the red smite can be really good because at that point it's going to do a lot more than a blue smite. I'm gonna pass towards the top side because the red buff is up. Oh, he got Udia, so I'm just gonna ignore the entire top side, and then I'm gonna go straight for um, the Herald, because Udia's down, so we want to prioritize the main objectives, so we took the Drake, so now we can take the Herald. Then we can use that to either break open the top or middle side. 
Take down the to uh, middle side is probably more beneficial for us because Ilao is going to win either way. If we take down the middle tower guys then we will have a lot more freedom when we invade the jungle because they don't really have that extra safety anymore. So taking down the middle tower opens up the entire jungle. That's why it is the most important outer tower in the game. So that's what we will be focusing on here. Okay, he's doing the blue buff. We can try to contest this one here. Oh, unfortunately I was not within range for that auto attack. I was just about to flash him here, but then I saw Ilawi. Oh, that's a lot of damage. We can use that ultimate for the bonus movement speed and then run towards the tower because we already have minions so we won't really die to it. Renekton is helping us out with the flanking so that's nice. I can use a W here. Nice and he got the kill that's pretty perfect. Wait I should be fine here right? Oh I guess not. Oh I totally forgot that she ulted because normally that's a delay before the tentacles really slam the ground but... It took me a second to realize that you used the ultimate, so it comes down immediately, otherwise I could just walk out of it. It's a bit unfortunate giving away the shutdown to allow it because Renekton can't really do anything in this matchup and now she probably going to dominate. The entire top side and taking down our towers as well, so... That's my bad, but it's also really bad to give Katarina the takedown. Here took my red, okay. See, yeah, we can't really go for Elias, he's backing off here, so let's just head towards mid. I want to use the Herald I have here. If we can take down the middle tower, then it's going to open up the entire jungle, so that's what I want to be focusing on. If I had 6 full mid, then we could do it a lot faster, because his W passive will absolutely destroy the towers. I should still be able to take down the tower though, we'll see here. Unless Karina comes back much faster than I expected, then we should be good to go. And now we already got the first tower though, so we don't really get that much gold, but most importantly, it will open up the jungle, so we have a lot more freedom right now, so. That's great, now we can go for the blue buff. I think Udia will come actually, yeah, he's there. Oh what, apparently I didn't smite, I feel like I pressed smite right there but yeah I don't know what happened. Anyways guys you can actually secure the objectives from a lot of junglers, for example the dragon or the herald because your Q, your evolved Q is basically a second smite so if you combine your smite and your Q at the same time then you're going to deal a lot more burst damage. And that is something a lot of junglers will not be able to match unless you're playing against the Nuno because um. Nuno also has a smite on the Q, so... It will obviously not work against him, but against most of the junglers you will be able to secure the objectives that way. So always try to time your Q and the smite at the same time when you want to contest objectives. Oh, I should not have went for that kill right there, I'm dead as well. Rip. Yeah, we should not have taken that fight. We might risk losing the dragon right now though, so... That is not good. We just want to keep going for the the items here guys and then... If they're building armor then we can also go for an armor pen item but usually you want the dust blade then another lethality item and then you can go for the armor pen here. So it looks like Udia is not doing it cause um... His team is not with him and we already have vision so we can go for it if we are fast enough. So our top lane is getting completely destroyed. We can't really help him out because we are a melee champ and Ilao is going to absolutely destroy melee champs that have to jump. They have to like engage onto her. The only ones who can deal with her are Senna and Six so... The way we are going to carry this game is that we play towards the uh, objectives, so we want the drakes and then we play towards the soul. Once we get the soul then we can snowball the game and 
try to push through the middle and bottom lane. MF is alone in the bottom side here, so we can look for a flank. Just make sure that she is isolated, because if you don't hit the isolated targets, then you will be losing a lot of damage. There you go, and we're gonna save the E just to jump out. As I said early on, when you gank, you don't want to blow that E immediately, you want to save it. Or when they use their movement abilities or their flash. Or if you have to escape after diving. You can look for another dive here, we don't know how many people are coming. See if we can flank again. Oh, never mind, there's a Pantheon all coming in. You have to get a kill before... Um, okay, we got Pantheon, that's good. Because if Katarina got a reset right there, then we would have all died, so... Pretty important that we did not give away a kill here, so that's great. So now we can go back to farming. It's really easy to farm once you hit level 6 and you have that evolved Q, so that's why I like to go for that all the time. There was a point where a lot of people like to evolve your uh, ultimate first. But since you have Dustblade, you already get a lot of invisibility from takedown, so you don't really need it anymore. So now you can just go Q so you can power farm. That's the Udia top side. Is he doing the Herald? I'm not really sure actually. Okay, he's not nice. This is why they have to be really careful because Ilawi has two core items and it's gonna destroy people with an AoE damage. So that's why I'm not going topside. I think they should be able to handle it though if they play properly. Nice, they got her. You have to CC chain Ilawi because if you don't do that, then she's going to win even a 1 versus 3. I'm gonna combine Q with my smite right here. There we go. That way they cannot really contest it because you get so much burst damage. So now we have the Yumus Ghostblade. So the reason I like to uh, buy this on Karsex is because it really helps with the mobility because you get so much bonus movement speed from the active so it helps you get to places faster. It also helps you chase people when they're trying to run away. We can look for a fight here, pop the active, then we can go for Karina. Oh, what? She dashed away, okay. There we go. That Dust Blade passive is really, really OP. That invisibility, it is so hard to play around, guys. Because you can't target the guy who just killed your teammate, so you just have to stand around, really not being able to do anything. So of course, we're going to, for the W Evolve second. That evolution is actually what makes car 6 um, viable in the team fights because you get that extra AoE damage and you also get that insane slow on isolated targets. You can pretty much just flank people and then try to hit them with the W's. You actually get a lot of utility from that W. Also another thing that's really OP is that you have a Ravenous Hunter, right? And your Q is a single target damaging ability, so you're going to heal for the full amount. They have so much to sustain just because of that one rune. We can go for MF here. I'm gonna flash on her. Oh, she's dead. Senna's coming in. That's nice. So her flash has the same cooldown as mine, so... We will know that for the next fight, so we can just focus it down. I can also go for Pantheon here. Oh, he's not within range for this smite, okay. Oh, his uh, shield thing is so annoying. Okay. I could actually escape if I took the uh, Blast Cone right there. I could also have gotten the kill if I had like one millisecond extra of time. That was pretty close though. Anyways, top side is down. It is what it is. It sucks a bit because uh, Renekton can't really do anything against Aloy because Renekton 
has to be up in your face for him to deal damage, right? And that's the kind of champions that Ilao is really good against because he just destroys anyone who has to engage on top of you. He's very vulnerable to ranged damage and people who can kite. But he just destroys anyone who has to like engage, like Jax and Renekton for example. Okay, this is very risky. They had to watch out for the tentacles, just kited it around. Went for Pantheon first here. See how I'm dodging the tentacles, always keep in mind what they have and what the enemy champion can do. Because if we don't respect Ilaris damage, then she's just going to one shot our entire team. Now we can go for the other Drake here, so we play towards the soul. If we can do that, then we can easily win the game. I'm gonna time my Q with the smite guys. So, as you can see, we did a lot of burst damage, so Udio really has no chance of contesting it. Really good hook from Blitz as well. Oh nice, the rip off is up, so I can take that down. We're going to heal a lot. Look at the healing we get from each Q. Combine that with a W. We just become a life-stealing monster that they can't really deal with. Oh, I got ignited. That sucks a bit. Anyways, I have the armor pin right now because they are building armor, so... I still want to be able to shred them, so Udyr and Ilawi building armor items, so we want some armor penetration. Now what's really good about this specific armor pin item is the fact that your abilities will apply slow. That is really really OP to have an assassins because no one will be able to escape from you, right? So it's even useful against people who are not building armor. We definitely also want some anti-healing this game here, because um Ilawi heals for a lot, Karina also heals for a lot because she has the uh, she's going for the AD build with the Blade of the Ruin King and the Kraken Slayer. I think she also has Conqueror, or she should have with that build at least, so it is going to be very useful. And Misfortune also has the uh Blood Tester, so there's also some healing there, so it's really good to have that. We have to CC chain her. Nice. As long as you can CC allow in time, then you, you can burst it down. But if you fail that, then you're dead, guys, because AoE, AoE damage is too much. I can go for MF here. Oh, no, mind, that's Udia, okay. So if we can take him down. We have the armor pin item, so he's just going down in no time. Go. Careful guys that um, your dust blade invisible invisibility passive and your ultimate invisibility do not stack so you want to be careful that you don't activate both at the same time because that means that it will be wasted. So if you get a takedown then let the uh, dust blade passive expire first before you use your own ultimate. That way you get to extend the duration but if you use it at the same time then it will not be extended. Is coming in here. Yeah, I got hit by these, so I just have to back off. Look at the damage I'm taking, even though I'm out of range. Then imagine if I had to take that with the ultimate as well, I would just have died. Now I can go in for it, she's low HP. We can also go for Udyr. That W is so useful. Arena sucks a bit. Okay, nice hook. But that W really makes you so useful in fights, because you can constantly apply that slow and AoE damage to people. And of course it also makes it harder for them to escape from you. And dodge it as well, because it will fire from three different positions. Now I should definitely build towards some grievous wounds. Go for the executioners here, you can just sit on the component if you want to. It should be enough right now. It's going to deny the healing Karina gets. 
and also Misfortune and Ilaria as well. We are mainly looking to deny Ilaria the healing though, this game. Because she's so fit and if we don't have anti-healing then she starts going to heal up while fighting us so we don't want that to happen. But of course it's also really good against Karina, especially her AD build with the Conqueror that she's going for right now. Because she's going to heal for a ton. And MF also has the Bloodthirster as I mentioned earlier on so we get a lot of value from 800 gold. Drake is spawning. And they got Elaria, so that should be pretty free for us. So now we are playing towards the soul. I'm gonna flank from the other side. That's what you want to do on Kha'Zix. You want to be flanking and you want to go for the carries. I'm just gonna kite backwards here. As you can see, the invisibility we get from Dustblade makes it so hard for them to target us. Okay, so that means that we can go for the Baron. I prefer if they walk towards the Baron because I can easily take this down. Uh, so and do it really fast as well. So now we get even more healing so they actually need to buy Grievous Wounds right now because if they don't then we're going to heal for a ton. We also have Ravenous Hunter so... We have too much healing for them to deal with. Karina does have Grievous Wounds on her ultimate but that's not enough. Alright, they are sonning away the enemy team, so we can take this down quite easily. Nice, and now we get the last evolution guys, so we want to use that on an E normally, so... It's going to extend the range. And it will also reset on takedown. So you can constantly go for kills like I'm doing right here. You can get one kill, then your E is reset, and then you can jump towards the next target. So that's why E is really nice to have as your third evolution. Now we should be able to go and end the game here. Okay, I guess not. Luckily it's buffed minions but they're still going to die. We don't really have more minions with us so... Can't do it alone here. Luckily that uh, Dragon Soul helps a lot with the sustain and the Ravnus Hunter as well. Go for MF. Oh wow, okay, he really wants me. We do still have the ultimate up though, and it is on a really low cooldown because we have 50 ability haste. Hopefully they can end the game here though. Yeah, this is what Ilawi does. This is why you really want to be careful when fighting her. Now, it's a mistake a lot of people make when fighting Ilawi is that they just jump into her face. Because she can easily pull off those 1 vs 3, 1 vs 4 fights. As long as people jump into her. A bit unfortunate we couldn't end the game here. But next push should be fine because we have the uh, Ocean Soul. I'm gonna go for the cleaver here. Okay, 6 went down. I don't think it matters too much though. We should be able to end here, so... We obviously want to be flanking. We do not want to go in from the front. Uh, that is suicide. That is not good. We also have the Oracle Lens here, so we make sure that we are not stepping on any wards. And we want to look to end this game as fast as possible. Also focus down the Squishy Champs. Unless someone like Ilawi is super low HP where I can just one shot her, we can go for Ulya here. Nice hook, and that should be free. Watch out for Ilawi. Wow, she almost one shot me, and I was completely out of range as well. Wow. I'm gonna heal up from these minions here, and then I can walk back into the fight. You want to go for the end? There we go, and we're almost full HP again, thanks to the soul. 
can't go through this way here, so we have to walk around. We can go for Eleven now, who also made us down. I have to poke it first. Watch out for, for E. See, we can just apply that W slow, guys, and then Senna can kite her with the slows. There we go. Now we can engage because she wasted her E. Wow, she already had her ultimate up again. That's impressive. Okay. Now we can go and end the game here. Our W applies such a huge slow they can't really escape. Wow, Senna... Senna actually saved me with that thing right there because they can't target me. Anyways, this should be GG's, so as always, thank you so much for watching guys, and see you guys in the next video.